Happy International Nurses Day. It's Florence Nightingale's birthday today. She's 198. She's nearly as old as Elizabeth Blucher. Wait, is she here? No. No, you've got quite a way to catch up yet, Elizabeth. Um, what a great party it was last night. Did you enjoy yourselves? You looked like you did. I just want to let you know that I, um, I haven't told you my medical credentials, but I was a nurse for about six years. I played Nurse Pam Sandwich <laughs> on Let the Blood Run Free, which was a live comedy show, and then it was a show on Channel 10, and it had two big seasons before we were kicked off for grossness. <laughs> We used to do all these operations and it had um, Pete Rosson and Brian Nankervis and, and Linda Gibson and all, all these um, wonderful comedians in it. And um, we used to do these operations and we'd use real offal. And we, the butcher, the local butcher had a credit because he'd give us tongues and lungs and hearts. You can't do that nowadays. Real blood and it was so disgusting. I cannot tell you what it was like on set with all the blood and everything. And also, um, the first time I ever dressed up as a nurse was when I was about four, three or four, and I got given one of those little nurses' uniforms with the red cape, the apron with the red cross, and the sort of nuns thing with the red cross on it. And my friend and I dressed up in our little nurses' uniforms when, when we were four, and we went round to the neighbours and um, to raise money for the new uh, uh, children's hospital in Melbourne, which has since been pulled down. <laughs> That's how old I am and a new, new one. But we, used to, we just wandered around the streets as four-year-olds with our little tin and we'd knock on the door dressed as nurses. Who could do that nowadays? No. So, and we raised, um, we sent out, we raised one pound and three shillings and I remember that because we sent our money off to the um, Children's Hospital Foundation and they sent a letter back saying that the money we raised had paid for a window and a brick. And it was really a great way to engage you in, you know, raising money and in, in good causes because every time we drove past the new children's hospital in Melbourne, I used to look up at that hospital and I'd think, gee, if we didn't raise that money, there'd be a hole in the side of that building. <laughs> it's going to be another fantastic day. We've got so much on, so I'm going to just get straight into it. So, Elizabeth, uh, you, you're not offended by it, because you and I are baby boomers, you know. We're lucky. Pardon? We're the good ones. We're the lucky ones. You know, the 60s and 70s, big teenagers then, when promiscuity was compulsory. <laughs> we all coupled like rabbits on heat. No gyms, no jogging. Was there, Elizabeth? The only exercise was trying to get out of your clothes in the heat of the moment. <laughs> yeah, Until the invention of the mini skirt. There was no, no struggling with your clothes with the mini skirt. You just put your hands on your head and you were ready for action. <laughs> my sister and I used to go to parties and we'd have these tiny mini skirts on and my dad used to go, where's your skirt? And we'd say, we're wearing it, and he'd go, that's not a skirt, that's a belt. And then he'd go, you won't get a boyfriend looking like that. He said, men like a bit of mystery. Yeah, he was wrong, actually. <laughs> um, I'm going to start by, uh, first of all, thank you for my um, fabulous uh, international nurses. See, if we tweet this, it'll go viral. It'll trend. International Nurses Day, so tweet International Nurses Day, celebrating the incredible work that nurses do for our communities, the in in essential work that, you know, so if you could tweet that, the two people who are tweeting. Are you tweeting? <laughs> yeah, well, so, so let me know when it trends. <laughs> International Nurses Day. Thank you to Florence Nightingale. Um, so, I'm first of all, the exhibition, I, 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 all those stands are absolutely amazing. I went around and I've got brochures on everything, just in case. 
wound management, COPD, all the things that I need. You know, I'm going, oh, I think my parents have got that. I think I'll just take one of those. And but the exhibitors have gone to a lot of trouble and they've got great exhibitions and great information. So please visit them all. Fill out your passport because um, it'll, they've, they're really, they're, it, their support is essential to a conference like this. And we want to make sure we thank them by um, going and visiting their stands. So one of our major sponsors, of course, is Sequiris. And um, I'm just going to, th they're our platinum sponsors, so please give them a round of applause to Sequiris. They're amazing. I'm going to put this down now and I'll go back to the lecture mic. Um, Sequiris have this uh, incredible sort of grant system called Championing, ch championing Change. <laughs> That's not easy to say. Um, so let me read out uh, what this is about. As part of Sequiris' ongoing commitment to public health and protecting adults from vaccine-preventable diseases, Sequiris Australia is proud to announce their 2018 to 2019 champion, Championing Change Innovation Practice Nurse, Nurse Grants. So these are exciting grants. So you might want to write down a bit of information. These innovation nurse grants recognise practice nurses' contributions to public health by supporting the implementation of innovative adult immunisation initiatives designed to boost coverage rates or improve the quality use of adult vaccines. Hang on, I've got to do this. Um, Selected by an independent expert review panel, three innovation grants to the value of $5,000 each and sponsorship to attend the 2019 APNA um, National Conference, including travel. So it's a great, a great prize. It includes travel accommodation registration and that'll be provided to successful grant recipients. Uh, if you are a practice nurse, this is the criteria. If you're a practice nurse working in a GP setting who drives or supports patient awareness, timely uptake of or a compliance with adult vaccines listed on the National Immunisation Program schedule, you are eligible to apply. To apply, each applicant is required to submit an application outlining their planned innovative initiative which must be implemented between the 1st of August and 31st of December this year and meet one or more of the outlined grant criteria. There is a review panel comprising three leading representatives from the Nursing, Immunisation and Medical Centre and they will be responsible for assessing all applications and these, this panel includes Magali De Castro, Angela Newbound and Dr Sarah Chu. The key dates. Submissions are open now and close at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Friday the 22nd of June this year. The Innovation Grant recipients will be announced on Friday the 6th of July. So about a month, a few, only, oh well, actually two and a half weeks later, with grant recipients to share their initiative with Sequiris on a date to be confirmed between the 11th and 31st of July. Apply now. To learn more about the Championing Change Innovation Practice Nurse Grants, including the specific criteria and, and terms and conditions, head to www.communityimmunity.com.au slash championing change. So there'll be plenty of information about this. Simply register with the Community Immunity website and upload your application to the site by 5 p.m. on the 22nd of June. And applications are now open. Good luck to you all. Wouldn't that be fantastic to get that? Thank you, Sequiris. They're great. OK, speaking of immunisation, let's get cracking on our next guest key spe keynote speaker. Um, I was born actually when the, uh, the, in the year that the uh, sulk, uh, polio vaccine first became widespread, thank heavens. And I only wish that at that time you'd done a little more work on the oral vaccine, because all I remember, my earliest memories of the medical profession, was um, a nurse arriving at school with what looked like an industrial drill and a bag of jelly beans. <laughs> And my husband remembers the big, you know, the big vaccine, uh, vaccination ambush in 1958, he said, when the whole class at his bush school was taken off on, into the scrub on a picnic. <laughs> and they walked in the scrub 
and then they walked around and they came up the back of the hall and they walk up the hall and into the hall and there's all these nurses with industrial drills and jelly beans. And in those days, the worry about vaccination, you know, the, the sort of push against it didn't come from, you know, no parental consent. It came from other kids warning other kids, you know, like, run! <laughs> And in fact, it's interesting because my parents have had the flu vaccine, but they said to me, we're not going to get the pneumonia vaccine because we've got friends in the walking group, my, my parents are in their 90s, we're not going to get the pneumonia vaccine because apparently it makes you really sick. So the word is still out. So you, you've got a lot of battles going on with immunisation. I'm sure you'll tell us all about it.